what you guys got another video here for you on how to install an all-in-one cpu cooler without removing the motherboard now a lot of people have already got their pcs built and they don't want to strip them down so i thought I'd make a video showing you how to install it without stripping down the whole pc but first before we do this let's have a quick word from today's sponsor cd key sales if you're looking for a cheap windows 10 pro or cheap windows 11 pro oem key then go to cd key sales type in uh, windows 10 or windows 11 and it will give you the option to click on uh, which one you want. Click on this one, and then you can uh, see we'll bit the Buy Now page. Hit the Buy Now button, and as long as your region is listed up above, you should be okay. Put in my promo code, capital B, capital R, 09, and apply this to your order to get a juicy discount. Once you click Apply, it will be reduced down to $16.41. Submit your order and then use PayPal to pay for your key. Then head over to Windows Activation Center and paste in your key and then activate your version of Windows 10 or Windows 11 Pro. Links will be found in the video description. So we're going to be using the uh, Solantium PC uh, Navis F240 ARGB uh, liquid cooler. So it's a 240 mil rad. And whether you've got an Intel processor or an AMD processor, you can use this cooler to cool down your CPU. So what we're going to do is take a look at all the contents in here, get it all out, get it prepped, and then get it installed into the case. But before we continue to do that, what we're going to need to have to do is remove the cooler that's already inside the case, and we'll probably have to take out the graphics card. So we're going to remove all of this stuff first. So I'm going to be removing the graphics card first, then we can get access to the CPU cooler to remove it. And of course, we'll have to remove those two top fans because we're putting the radiator there. And uh, we may need to remove the RAM as well so we can get access to uh, the uh, fans there a lot easier and also put the radiator in. So I'm just going to use the screwdriver here and then release the catch to remove the graphics card. I've already removed the power cable from the card. I can give that a bit of a clean later on. And once that's out of the way, that will give us access to the four screws on the the actual cooler here. Now we'll have to remove the fan on the cooler to get access to the other two uh, screws on there. So let me just start this off. I'm not going to show you every single screw because we'll be here forever and uh, you've got better things to do. So let me just undo all these screws and now we can give it a slight twist. Always give it a slight twist before you remove it because you don't want to pull the CPU out of the socket, especially if it's an AMD uh, CPU. Intel's not so bad, but AMD you can pull that straight out the socket and then you run the risk of bending the pins. So first off, let's remove that thermal compound. I'm going to be using the isopropanol alcohol to remove the thermal uh, paste off of the CPU here. So I'm just going to get a little uh, pad here and remove this. I'm using a 99.9% uh, isopropanol alcohol. You can use 70% uh, alcohol if you wish. It still does the job. So I'm just going to rub this on here and remove this uh, compound. Now it's always best to remove all the compound. On this case, it does have these panels that hide all the cables. So I'm gonna to need to remove these little back panels here so I can get access to the back plate and all the uh, cable in here. So let me go ahead and remove these uh, from the actual case here. Now, if I remember rightly, the back uh, plate was glued on with some sticky pad here. So I will need to remove this. So let me go ahead and remove this little panel as well and then we can just peel this off. Now I have to be careful here because this is for the other cooler, so I'm gonna remove the old back plate. Now most back plates are not stuck down like this, uh, but this is a first third party aftermarket cooler, so it did come with a sticky pad on it. So I just need to remove all of that sticky pad that's left behind. Now if you use an AMD uh, CPU here, it's possible that you might be able to use the back plate uh, that comes with the AMD uh, chip. So you can always use that. So let's go ahead and uh, get all of the contents out of the box so we can get this all prepped, ready for installation. Now, before you start uh, taking everything out of the box, just make sure you've got your measurements right here and there's enough clearance inside your case. This is 275 millimeters. Even though manufacturers will advertise this as a 240 mil rad, it is actually 275 millimeters long. So if you don't have enough clearance there, then this radiator is not gonna be good enough for the top of the case and you will need to put it at the front. So inside here, we've got all of our back plate, our thermal paste, all of the screws and cables that you need uh, for this and the tool 
to tighten down the screws. And we also have the radiator with the fans already attached and the pump itself. So let's take a look and get it out of the box. And as you can see here, it's well packaged. I'm just going to remove all of this stuff here so we can take a closer look. And you can see here, all the cable management has been done for you already. They've just got the little connectors on the end here. So all we need to do is plug in the cables here, which is a really nice added touch. Also on this side here, we do have another extension here so we can plug in a cable, which makes it super easy to install. So again, let's go ahead and take a look at the radiator. Radiator looks pretty good quality. And also there is on the other side here, uh, there is a refill point on this radiator, which uh, is another added bonus here. So you can refill if you need to, if the uh, radiator is getting a little bit empty. But you shouldn't really need to have to fill the uh, radiator uh, straight away. It should last a, a number of years before you need to even consider filling it up uh, with more liquid. So you can see through the radiator a little bit there. That's to let air flow through. And uh, the fans look pretty cool on this. These are ARGB. So it will have more cables on here to uh, do the ARGB. And there is the pump there. No RGB on the actual pump itself. So if you don't want to get the RGB uh, version, there is a non-RGB version as well. So let's get all of the fixtures and fittings out of the bag. And then we can take a look at how to install this onto the PC. Now, the instructions on this are very, very easy to follow, even if you've never installed one of these before. Just check the socket that you've got and follow the instructions. It's pretty simple. It's got all of the information uh, written on this document here. So these are the actual fix fixtures and fittings that we've got here. And just make sure you're using the right attachments for your type of uh, motherboard and socket that you've got. So let's go ahead and uh, offer up the uh, back plate here. I'm using an Intel system here, so I need to line this up. Now, this may look a little bit ski with when you do it on this version of Intel uh, board, because obviously this is a different socket and it might look a bit crooked, but it is supposed to be crooked. So next, I'm going to get the screws here and I'm going to go on the other side and screw this down to the back plate. So that's what I need to do here. It is a bit fiddly, especially with a tripod in a way, but you should have no problem doing this at all. So let's go ahead and get some screws into the back plate here. Now, don't try and over tighten one of the screws straight away. Just get a hold on it and then you can go in the diagonal corner and start to screw that into the back plate as well. And then once you've got that into position, you'll be able to put the rest of them in. It's pretty straightforward stuff. So just take your time and align the holes until you can uh, screw that in. I'll show you what it looks like from the other side so you can basically see what I'm seeing when I'm uh, tightening the screws in. So on the other side here, you can see daylight through here, and that means the holes are aligned correctly. So all I need to do here now, I've got three of the screws in. I just want to need to screw this other one in here and uh, basically just screw it in and tighten it down. Like I said, don't over tighten these straight away uh, because there is a little spanner you can use, which comes in a kit, which allows you to do a couple of extra turns. But you don't have to tighten this all the way down. Now, like I said before, it is crooked but it is meant to be crooked. So if you are looking at the user manual and seeing it crooked, don't worry for this socket, the 1200 socket here, LGA 1200, it's meant to be a little bit crooked. So that's the way it looks. Okay, so I've gone ahead and removed the fans from the top of the case because these were already installed and I don't need these anymore because we're having the fans from the radiator already pre-installed. Next, what I'm gonna do here now is give these a little slight turn here with my fingers and then I'm going to go ahead and get the spanner on these and give them a light tighten. Just a little tiny little turn just to give them a little tighten here to make sure they're not loose. Now, because the plastic uh, shroud is on this side here where the motherboard is, I could only do these a little bit finger tight. So I'm going to give these an extra couple of turns to make sure they're fully down. Uh, obviously, you don't want to be going too mad with this. A couple of little extra turns is good enough. Let me just finish off this, and there we go. And all we need to do now is apply thermal paste. Again, there's plenty of experts on the internet that will say you're using too much or you're using too little, and you should do the dot method or the cross method or whatever method they say you should do. Just do which one you want to do and uh, stick with it. I'm going to be using the spread method here. 
Uh, there's a little bit too much on there, but I can use the glove to pull off any excess here. That's not too bad. And again, once that's done, we've got a nice even coat in here. And now we can start thinking about offering up the actual pump here. So remove the sticker. Don't forget to remove that because otherwise it's not going to work correctly. And once we've done this, we can now check the uh, radiator here and plug in all of the cables. So make sure you've got all the cables plugged in. Now, you may be saying to yourself, what if I don't have addressable RGB on the motherboard? Well, you can use this uh, setup here, which has the SATA on here, and there's a little uh, cable on here, which we can plug in uh, to the actual addressable RGB. But I have addressable RGB onto this motherboard, so I'm going to be using uh, the extension uh, four pin fan connector here and plug this onto this one here. And this will go straight to uh, the actual board itself. So that is the four pin uh, fan extension cable here. So we can uh, route that around the back and plug that into the motherboard here. So that is the one for the fans. And now we've also got one on the uh, pump as well, which goes to the pump header on the board. And then we also have the RGB here, which we need to daisy chain. We can daisy chain these and then plug these into the addressable RGB header on the board here. Uh, or if you have a hub, you can use it on the hub. So what I'm going to do here is daisy chain these and plug these all in here. And uh, this is pretty straightforward stuff. You just push in the connector here, make sure the arrows are lined up and push them in. And then we just push this one straight to the motherboard or hub, depending on which way you're setting yours up. And there we go. That is now all done. And this is the uh, five volt one here because it has three pins, not the four pin version. And also we need to get the radiator in now. So let's just line the radiator up. Now, depending on which way you're going to have this, you can see there's already wires here for the fans. So you don't want that facing you because it's not going to look very nice. So I'm going to rotate it this way and have the uh, tubes going down on the rear exhaust fan here. And then I'm going to line up the uh, pump here and put this into position. Make sure it's around the right way and attach the pump. And uh, once we've got this aligned, I'm just leaving the radiator out for a second because I'm holding a pump down and I'm now going to put in the springs. So you need to put the springs on. There's four springs. Just drop these four springs on. And once we get the four springs on, we can screw these down with the screws that come in the kit. So let me go ahead and just line these four springs up and I'm going to get the screw and then tighten down with the uh, screwdriver here. Now you want to do this in a diagonal sort of formation here. You don't want to work your way around in a clockwise way or anti-clockwise. You want to go uh, diagonally across and that way, and don't over tighten on the first one straight away. So just work your way around like I'm doing here and uh, just don't over tighten straight away. Otherwise you're going to end up with problems. Once you've got that done, that is the uh, pump on. And then we can then take care of the cables by tucking them through depending on how you like to uh, wire your cables up. I'm going to tuck mine through and then bring them back round from the outside. So this is the SATA one here. This is for the power. And then we also have our four pin connector, which will go for the pump. So we'll plug this into the pump header on the motherboard. Okay, so let's get the uh, radiator lined up here. I'm going to tuck these cables through uh, up the top, and then we can then plug these in in a while's time. So let's get the radiator in and line this up. Now, once I get it lined up, I will lift up the PC and I'll show you how I'm going to screw this in. But you can screw it in just like this, but the tripod is in the way, so I need to turn it on its head. Now I've got these cables tucked all the way through here. This will help with the cable management so it looks clean inside. So try to keep your cables on the backside so you can't see it. And this is what I try to do here. And uh, once that's done, I can then screw down the radiator. Again, don't over tighten these, only tiny little screws, but there's plenty of screws here to hold this in position. So I'm holding the radiator up and I've now got all of the screws in apart from these ones in the middle. So I've just got to put a couple of extra ones here. And once that's done, you may need to position your radiator the way you like it. And then I need to put in the dust cover here and that's now in. So we've got the pump header on the board here, which I've plugged the pump in. And you can see the cables look nice and tidy poked around the back there. That's the best way I like doing it. 
and I had to remove the, uh, the the RAM here to get the actual pump in. So I'm going to put the RAM back in now because the, the actual fans were stopping it from going back in. So I need to line this up and basically get this uh, slotted back in. And with this tripod in a way, it's an absolute nightmare. It really is. I'm making it look more hard than what it is, but it is pretty straightforward. Let me go ahead and line this other one up. And again, once we get this in, we can push this down. You should hear a clicking noise once you push these down. There we go. So the RAM's back in. And all we need to do now is plug in the rest of the cables. And you can see how close that is to the fan here. So I had to remove this to get the radiator in. So I'm going to be plugging in the addressable RGB here. Now, I don't have to go to the board here because I've got a hub here, and I'm just going to connect them on the back here so they go straight to my hub. Uh, but you may need to go to the header on the board for the addressable RGB. And once I've done this, I need to do the SATA cable, which is for the power of the pump, and I need to find a SATA connection from the power supply to this cable here. So let me go ahead and make sure this is orientated in the right way like so, and then clip this in, just like so. And uh, we're pretty much there now. We just need one more cable, which is for the fans on the radiator, which is going to go to the motherboard. So I'm going to go ahead and plug this in, like so. And that is the fan plugged into the board. And remember, they're daisy chains, so there's only one of these, and that means we'll have uh, power for the two fans here. Next, we've got a graf graphics card back in, and there we are. It's all done. And that's pretty much it. The uh, radiator is in, the pump's all screwed down, and we've got it all uh, positioned how I like it here. So it's right at the very front here, and the door does close, and uh, that should be perfectly fine for a nice, cool CPU. If you want to see a thermals test, let me know in the comments section below, and I'll be happy to do that for you. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Just want to say a quick shout-out to all my YouTube members who have joined my YouTube members group. I really do appreciate the support. Also, a special shout out to Mike Bigness, Albert Houston, Mar Sierra, Welsh Tony One, Geo Sam, Hills Computer Repair, Jedi Buddhist, PC Repair Tech, and Gary Belts. Have a lovely weekend, and I shall catch you in the next video, or I'll see you on the Discord server. Bye for now.